Welcome to the Warcraft Movie Presentation Panel. Your panelists are Duncan Jones, Rob Pardo, Chris Metzen, Bill Westenhofer, and Nick Carpenter. to the Warcraft movie panel. So I, we did this, uh, I think three years ago we did something like this, but uh, this time I think it's gonna be 10 times as exciting because we actually have a release date for the movie. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanna introduce everyone on the panel. So to my right is Duncan Jones. He is uh, the director for the Warcraft movie. He's uh, directed a couple really awesome films, if you guys have seen Moon or Source Code. And more importantly uh, to you guys, I think, uh, Duncan has been playing Warcraft games since Warcraft 1, played Warcraft 2, Warcraft 3, World of Warcraft, even played Lost Vikings. <laughs> Amiga! <laughs> uh, I think you guys all know the gentleman to my left, which is uh, Chris Metzen the guy in charge of all lore and story and franchise direction and Blizzard and pretty much just the soul of Blizzard. So he'll be able to talk a lot more about uh, the, the movie and all the, what we've been trying to do with it. And then to his left is Bill Westenhofer. Bill is uh, the special effects supervisor for the film. He's actually uh, won the Oscar twice for Life of Pi and The Golden Compass. But really, I don't think you guys should care about that. What's really important is that he has a uh, level 90 alliance mage and several other armies. <laughs> a lot of horde out there, I hear. <laughs> horde you out there? <laughs> and then to uh, Bill's left is uh, Nick Carpenter. Nick is our VP of cinematics. And he's uh, really the guy that's responsible for all the awesome Blizzard films. Did you guys see the Heroes in the Storm cinematic yesterday? Yeah. Well, that is the work of uh, Nick and his talented department. So thank you all for coming. And uh, what I want to do, I'm going to kind of moderate the panel and kind of serve up questions to these guys and just try to get them to talk as much as possible. Um, the one thing I will kind of put out there as a disclaimer is we are still over two years away from the movie actually being released, and we haven't even started filming yet. So a lot of what we're going to talk about today is, is really um, these guys' background, you know, kind of what they've been doing with trying to do all the pre-production on the movie. But there's really um, not a ton of brand new information that we can reveal because they haven't even started marketing the film yet, so we got a ways to go. All right, with all that out of the way, um, maybe Duncan, you can kind of start and just talk a little about why you like the Warcraft franchise, why you decided to take this on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, I'm loud. <laughs> um, I was, uh, you know, I've been playing games for a while and um, used to be uh, involved in another franchise playing at Ultima Online. I started a clan for that, played that for a few years as a beta tester. And then our whole clan kind of migrated <laughs> over to Warcraft, um, World of Warcraft when that came out. Um, and was a, a huge fan of the game, playing it for a couple of years. Um, before I started, you know, getting very busy with my first feature film, Moon. Um, and after Moon, I did Source Code. After Source Code, I was kind of really at a place where I had the opportunity to, to do a couple of different franchise films. But I, you know, there was, I was already aware that Warcraft was out there and that they were trying to make it into a movie. And it had been taking a little bit of time. <laughs> And uh, I would, I constantly, my, my producing partner and I had kept on uh, checking in with the production to find out, you know, what's going on with it. You know, when's, when's it going to happen? Is it going to happen? Is there, you know, any chance? You know, maybe I can get involved. And uh, fortunately, you know, or unfortunately for other people, but fortunately for me, the opportunity arose, and um, I was given the opportunity to read the script. 
um, that was available at that time. And I was like, oh, this is so great, but. <laughs> <laughs> we say that all the time too. <laughs> and um, it was, it was, it was a, 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 you know, I, I wanted it to be the Warcraft that in my heart I felt, you know, the, the film deserved to be. And at that time it was very human centric, very Alliance centric. And um, I thought, no, you know, if we're going to make this into a movie, it's got to be what the original Warcrafts always were, which is you can be a hero no matter what side you're on, and it's about both sides. It's got to be red and blue. Well, I mean, I, I mean on, on that point, uh, you know, the first day we met, um, we had been working through kind of versions of the story for a very long time, um, which you guys know. And, uh, having that balance represented was something that was very important to us um, and in certain iterations of the stories we had had in the first day we met Duncan he was just like this this has to happen and we had kind of been told from time to time like ah it's too much the audiences really want to focus on one or another um, and we had just done this dance and the first day we met this guy it's just like it's got to be this and we're like oh <laughs> yes well and the funny thing about that too was, was just that uh, I think we had always wanted to see you know that other side the orcs brought much more forward yeah. and you know it always felt like oh the audience doesn't really want that and lo and behold you know Duncan came in and pitched to us and, I, and he was worried that we weren't going to go for it you know he, he was like coming in going I don't know if the Blizzard guys are going to like my pitch you like the way we're going with it and then I think just me and Chris just we're just looking at each, each other, other across like, the table going is this happening <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, another thing too which um, I think got us really excited to work with Duncan was uh, you know you've been turning down other after you did Source Code, you know, I think you had a lot of people knocking on your door and really wanted you to work on other films, and you, you kept on moving out. <laughs> I, you know, it was, it, there was, there was opportunities, but, but it's so easy to get sucked into, into franchises that maybe you don't have the connection to. And I think for, for me, Warcraft was an opportunity to be involved in something where I actually really gave shit, you know, and I really wanted it to be what I had loved when I was playing it. So, so that, yeah, and, and, and you know, about that pitch, I mean, the, the, the fact that we were going to try and make sure that if we were going to do this as a film, we needed to re really make sure that our audience, beyond, you know, people who know Warcraft, everyone understood that if you're, you know, the orc heroes, you have to feel as empathetic and care about them and their situation and why they're doing what they're doing as you do about any of the human beings. Well, I think that's one of the things that uh, makes Warcraft... Uh, a lot more unique and separated from something like Lord of the Rings, right? You know, it's uh, the orcs, the, the red side, they're not just bad guys. You know, they are, they are characters and they have a viewpoint. <laughs> Sound. Hold on, one okay. at a time. Sound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, uh, Bill, maybe you can talk a little bit about uh, what, how you got started working with Warcraft and what, you, you know, kind of your play experience. Sure. Can you hear me? Is that better? <laughs> so, um, it, this was uh, interesting. I'll, I'll start for a second with when I interviewed for this job. Uh, I sat down and the very first thing that the producers asked me is if I knew anything about the Warcraft universe. And I just about <laughs> spit up my coffee because... Uh, I started playing Warcraft in the alpha test in, uh, when, way back in 2004. In fact, it became so obsessive, I was on the set of Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, and I had to dedicate a couple hours to make sure I got, uh, uh, you know, can keep going and get my character level and get the dungeon run in. Uh, I even, um, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Uh, in, in, um, I was working on Golden Compass, and uh, that was in London, and my guild was back here in the States, so I did get up at 2 in the morning a couple times to do a Blackwing Lair run. So, with that point, I want to, I want to you know, emphasize the fact, you know, with the people who are working on this film, these are Warcraft fans who are making this, and we're going to make sure that it's, uh, it's really special and that everyone's proud of uh, what they have to see. So, specifically for the characters in the film, we're, uh, we're doing live action with uh, CGI. This, it's an extremely complex uh, endeavor for the visual effects side. I, a lot of times I liken this to Avatar meets Game of Thrones in terms of the uh, level of complexity of what we're doing. Uh, we are 
using real actors for the orcs. Uh, the orcs are going to be as emotive, and like Duncan said, you have to believe them as much as any human character. So we're striving incredibly hard with uh, minute detail to make them as real as possible. This is going to be gritty and real. The guys get dirty. There's, uh, you know, you're, you're down with the characters when they're fighting, but we are dedicating this. And in fact, we have an incredible team at Industrial Light and Magic who is working on the orcs for us. Uh, so we, it's in good hands, and it, you all will be very proud of it. So um, maybe uh, Duncan and Chris, you guys can talk a little bit more about kind of trying to adapt the lore and the storyline and really make it feel like an uh, authentic Warcraft movie. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think one, of the, one of the real uh, difficult decisions we had was what part of the lore to focus in on. Um, you know, you, you guys have achieved such a huge, vast timeline and so many different stories and memorable characters. It's really about picking what worked for us um, and also which re what really got to the root of, of what Warcraft is and where it came from, without saying too much. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, well, this like quicksand. Uh, right. <laughs> uh, you know, we had, because we had been worked, working on multiple iterations of the story, you know, for, for the years, you know, coming up before, before we had met. And it was kind of this tap dance between, um, you know, do you focus on, you know, all these different races? You know, you know each, each faction really has a number of races with distinct stories. And ultimately, the community, everyone wants to see their thing. You know, like, where, where's, where's my troll movie? Um, and we sit and go, troll movie, trip out. You're really good. I don't know. Um, so, you know, it, it, was, it was kind of a, a process of, of kind of honing in on, on what are the themes that are the most universal, right? If it's going to be difficult to, you know, construct a story that really sings to everybody's specific, you know, factional or, or racial reality, um, the trick was, you know, can we find that perfect touch point that really has, you know, the, the broadest Warcraft themes that I think everybody gets, you know? Well, like, one of the things that I think we talk a lot about is that Warcraft is such a huge franchise that it's almost like where do you shine the spotlight? You know, because um, there's really no way that you can translate what everyone here has experienced in the game into a single movie. So a lot is figuring out which part of it you want to do and also what characters do you want to bring forward because, you know, aren't movies a lot more about kind of the characters rather than about the world? And how much time do you spend in the Lion's Pride? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> a lot. So one of the things I think is uh, going to be pretty exciting to the people here, though, is maybe talking a little bit about the locations, you know, and the places yeah. that uh, we're going to be able to show within the movie itself. Well, I mean, this seems like an opportunity. We have a couple of pieces of very early concept artwork um, that we could show, um, if you're interested in that. Do you guys want to see some concept art? I'm pushing the magic button. Uh-oh. There we go. So we got, oh, is that Drenor? Oh, yeah, fantastic. So this is uh, it's like an early piece of Drenor. And, you know, again, one of the things that we uh, need to, needed to work out is just where the story takes place and how much of it takes place um, in each location in order to really give a sense of the grandness and scale of, uh, of, of the world. Um, this is an environment, obviously, uh, we felt very uh, passionately about making sure it was in there. <laughs> Anyone recognize that? <laughs> so this is uh, another piece. This is uh, Dalaran. Um, and uh, we, I mean, one of the things we should really mention also is the, uh, is the amazing team that we have around us working with us on the film. Um, the uh, production designer on the film is Gavin Bouquet, um, who worked on a number of different Star Wars films, ironically. <laughs> yes, Star Wars. Yes, Star Wars. <laughs> um, and then um, we've been working with also, also with Blizzard's artists as well. There's a number of artists we've been working with you, from you guys. Yes. Um, uh, Nick's team has been great uh, you know, helping and bringing a lot of the DNA uh, from, from Warcraft. In, in particular, Wei Wang oh, has, yeah. has lent a hand on designing uh, 
preachers for us, and it's it's really incredible to see the the detail and the work. You know, the, you're going to see it's it's as if the you know this world existed first, and what you've been seeing all along is an interpretation, and you're going to see a real work, and it's it's pretty awesome. Yeah, we've had a chance to work pretty closely with you guys, and you know, really realize Duncan's vision, and uh, you guys, from what I've seen, this. It's not going to disappoint. It looks like a Warcraft feature film, and it's mind blowing. That's a little bit of Iron Forge. <laughs> you know, it, it, it strikes me that one of the really interesting things to have watched over the past six months, um, as Duncan's team has been doing a lot of design, and um, they've, I've had a little bit more visibility into what Nick's group has been doing. It, it strikes me that when we're just doing this this work, let's say we're building an expansion set or we're just working on the game, what's like so often we'll have a vision. You know, we'll have an idea like Dalaran or Iron Forge or any of these spaces. Um, and when you're building it for purposes of a video game, you're kind of constricted by how many polygons you can put into a scene, how you block a scene, uh, player traffic and flow through a city. Like there's so many design constraints um, or design strengths really, but that kind of demand things of your vision. Oh, we gotta put a window here, we gotta, we gotta take out this hallway and do this, and um, it's kind of an exacting science. So one of the really fun things about watching this production process go has been that these guys are kind of freed to kind of capture the vibe of these areas, but kind of explode it out a little bit, make these areas feel more cinematic, make them feel a little more lived in, a little more grand, um, than what we can literally do in the game. Uh, like that, Alliance? <laughs> and I feel like home? And not to make you all jealous, but I did have a little geek out moment when I realized that I was actually going to be standing in Iron Forge and work in the Stormwind. So uh, <laughs> that I'm pretty excited about. I mean, I think one of the, one of the most fun things for us um, about working on a film like this at the scale we're doing it at is we actually get to physically build yeah. a lot of locations yes. in the film. So you mentioned Lions Pride Inn. So uh, everyone on the <laughs> on the Alliance side, mm -hmm. one of the first things they saw was the the inn in, in Goldshire. You and, can uh, just imagine, you know, what our our uh, production parties are going to be like and where they're going to be. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I mean, cool. it, it, it's even that. It's like you know, looking at a lot of these big marquee areas, um, which is super exciting. But just things like, no, we're gonna we're gonna plan a shot at the Lions Pride Inn. No, I was just like, it's it's like I've almost spent more time. <laughs> well, I hate to say this, but like in Goldshire, right? Yeah. After <laughs> X number of characters over the years, but it's just so familiar, right? Yeah. It's just this. It's just the the grassroots of Warcraft, and there's there's obviously places like that all over the world. But I love that that this potentially takes us to kind of more of the intimate spots as well that yeah. are almost as familiar, right? Well, the one thing. I don't know if I've ever said this before, guys, but I, I think you will all agree. Is that when we talk about Warcraft, we talk about this big franchise, and, and, and someone's rocking in the other hall. Um, <laughs> we talk about this thing, and you, you talk about the, the main characters or the, or the plot lines or some of the big chapters that have come before. Um, but the trick is you know what character is most famous in World of Warcraft to all of us? Hugger. <laughs> the character that is most famous is the world itself. You might have met Thrall, and you might have fought the Lich King, and you may have found Hogger over there in Elwyn, but I guarantee you we've all spent X number of hours in the Barrens and Westfall, and it's almost like the placement of the trees and the roads and the vibe and the, and the color palettes. It's actually most of the engagement we've had is literally in the world itself, and that's been a really major value of ours is um, in translating the film and making this thing cinematic, it's it's finding those values. It's almost like, you guys remember yesterday we were talking about like the player models, like don't break it, right? It's the point of maximum familiarity. Sure, you can reanimate everything and sure you can blow the polygons out, but that's not where the flavor is. It's not where our hearts are or the, the visuals that we're so connected to. So that value is critically important that we kind of pull out the nuances of these areas with maximum familiarity, it just feels right, even though it's a little, a little grander for storytelling purposes. 
So uh, Duncan, like one, you kind of mentioned uh, one of the other people that is not on stage that's been working on the film, but maybe you guys, you can kind of tell the uh, audience here about some of the other people that are working on the film and you know, kind of reassure them that uh, Warcraft's in good hands. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, uh, one of the pe one of the people that I wanted to mention is Maez Rubio, who's um, doing our wardrobe and costume design, um, and that has become an incredibly important and interesting um, uh, uh, puzzle for us to solve. Because obviously, half of our cast is live action and real, and it, and and that's a very traditional route. But with half of our cast being virtual, um, you know, being performed by actors but using uh, motion capture technology. Um, it's like, how, how do you actually approach that as far as how you costume those characters? So we're actually, even though they're not going to be um, performing in the costumes, we actually have to have them for photographic references and so that we can actually see on camera what those costumes look like, how they move, how gravity affects them. So we've actually started making orc costumes at full scale, which are, uh, That's which really are incredible. Great, yeah. <laughs> and and Maya's, did, Maya's, Maya's worked on Avatar. Um, and also on uh, Apocalypto as well. So I think for, for what we're trying to do, she was just the perfect uh, perfect person for that. It just shows that that's the level of detail that we're, we're after and, and seeking to put into this, getting down to how, the, how a rivet attaches and how the, the leather straps from a, you know, a pauldron are, are weaved in. And by building it real, we're getting that stuff uh, as you know, detailed and in interesting as possible. So it's probably safe to say that Maez would always win the costume contest year over year. Uh, yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, other people I'm working with is uh, uh, Paul Hirsch, is the editor that I worked with on Source Code and is, uh, has an amazing uh, body of work. He, he worked on Empire Strikes Back, um, uh, won an Oscar, Ray, he was, uh, did Ferris Bueller for Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Um, just a, a crazy, eclectic body of work. He's an institution in, uh, in the industry and an amazing editor. Cool. Um, maybe uh, Bill and Nick, you guys can maybe talk a little bit about what it's like to try to translate Warcraft into visuals. I know you talked about it a little bit, but obviously it's going to be a real big challenge to make orcs and do orcs that have acting, you know, how you take these goofy, cartoony looking characters that we create and make them photorealistic, but still Warcraft. Well, I mean, funny enough, uh, in the cinematics department, we do this all the time. You know, we work very closely with the game teams and we try to translate that into a much higher resolution space. And so when we had a chance to be a part of this, the discipline is very similar, except they're just going so much further. And, you know, I mean, like Chris was saying, you know, we've seen all these spaces. We'll make a concept, I'm like, wow, we're seeing it from game and then actually translate to concept and then what these guys are going to do with it. It's just, it's absolutely amazing. And, you know, I can't tell you guys enough, it's absolutely in the right hands. You know, trust this guy, he's gonna, gonna make an amazing film. It's fun. It's, you know, it, we, we wanna do it as, uh, as much justice as possible. And it, we're, you know, we're pushing the technology, we're, we're doing on-set motion capture, a lot of uh, technical jargon, but it's, it's the kind of thing that we're really, the, the orcs aren't going to be, they're not monsters, they're really going to act, they're going to have personalities. Uh, it's, and then the, the level of detail is, you know, we'll, we'll go to lengths to build a real costume. Uh, we'll build uh, full, full size uh, lighting maquettes just to get all the details just right. And um, there's, a, there's a constantly moving frontier, I think, on that technology as well. Exactly. And you see it from the Planet of the Apes movies to, you know, Avatar earlier on and, and what they did with, uh, with Mark Ruffalo on the, in the Hulk. Uh, as, as the Hulk in the Avengers movie. Absolutely. In fact, it's you know we're working with the same the same team yes. um, that did the did the Hulk on the uh, ILM movie. Right. And you know we're we're, we're benefiting, benefiting I think from the fact that we're working with people um, in you know Alex Gartner and Chuck Roven who, who you know Chuck Roven who worked on the Batman movies was was producing those um, and Legendary and, and and that team who've actually given us the support to to uh, make a film the way we think it needs to be made. Absolutely. Um, you know, in, in the environments as well, uh, where it, what you're going to see, the, the concept art, it's going to be, it's, it's going to look, uh, you'll recognize it as the environment, but it's going to look completely real. Um, you know, the, if we're doing Elwyn Forest, there's, there's trees and perhaps the size of the trees and the distribution are uh, something you might not see in this world, but the, the, mind, the fine detail is, 
something that you know looks completely photographic. You know, so it, it, it's that that kind of thing. That's how we're trying to push a realistic, uh, amazing vision of uh, what you've seen in the games and what you're familiar with. Yeah, just keeping the spirit. And when you guys go through this experience, it's going to feel like you're living in this world. It's, I mean, like he was just saying with the trees, they talk about the bark. When we look at in-game screenshots, and we're like, how do we translate that into physical prop? And I mean, down to the roots and the leaves, you guys. Like, when we talk about some of these spaces, these guys dig super deep. And you know, we are, there have been times where, as a technical consultant, I've had to log in my character and go fly yeah. over to, uh, to Dalaran to get some screenshots. But uh, you know, it's, and it's good to be a mage. You can port around. <laughs> I mean, the other thing, you know, like Bill, I mean, he's such a fan. Like every day, like when we're when we're working things out, he'd be like, you know, it'd be really cool. This little Easter egg right here. And I'm like, and I'm like, I don't know if anyone's gonna see. He's like, dude, I got this, I got this. And so we're always chasing these little things. You guys, they are putting so much cool little details. Pay, pay close attention to everything. Yeah, I mean, I think that's always been one of the ambitions is to is to strike it. On a, on a level where people can enjoy the film who don't know everything about the world, but at the same time have enough things in there, in the subtext and, and, and in the environment, and even some of the storylines where it, you actually, you know more than some of the audience will know. So you're gonna get even more out of it than, than what's there for everyone else. So I think one of the challenging things with uh, taking franchises like this into movies is, you know, how do you partner with a franchise holder? In our case, you know, obviously us. And I think um, what Legendary has done a, a great job is that they've always kept us very collaborative. But I thought it might be good to hear from you guys about, you know, working with Blizzard and what, where the benefit of the collaboration's been and, and how involved we've been. Well, I mean, to, to go back a little bit to what, what Chris was saying, I mean, I think it was, it was kismet when we first, uh, you know, when we first started talking and I gave you my pitch, the relief that that's where you had hoped it was going totally. anyway was, you know, was, was really what made it feel like, oh, okay, this is home. This is going to work out all right. You know, I'm not going to be fighting my way through this. We were all kind of already seeing it in the same direction. Yeah, it was, it was definitely a love connection, like, immediately. Like, it was good. It was a happy day. A happy day. And I think kind of the same things happened on the, the art side, right, Bill? I mean, you get, uh, you know, when we talk about designing a character to have uh, you know, support from d designers who have that in their DNA and know it's a second hand. It, it just gets that uh, essence of Warcraft without having, you know, automatically in the first go. I mean, and it goes both ways. I mean, when we work with dev teams internally, you know, everybody gets the Blizzard style and then we all have this very specific idea of what we want to create. These guys are exactly the same. They plugged right in day one and just, we've been running ever since. It's good to have that mindset because we do have to work out things. Like Duncan said, we this is a we have live action. We have people. We have uh, live action concerns where, you know, the Warcraft style. If you're going to try to reach over your head to grab something, you have this pauldron that's knocking you in the side of the head. Those are things that we have to work out. Oh yeah, I'm sure I'm here. <laughs> Always like make the shoulder pad bigger, bit, big, bigger, big, bit. And they're just like, it's like, gonna this fall is over. Not gonna work, Nick. I'm like, <laughs> not my problem. Right. <laughs> So, um, you know, what do you think is going to be uh, the most challenging part of this, trying to put this whole thing together? Well, I mean, we're, we're at the, uh, the, the exciting time where we can really see the shooting date coming up on us now. So it's, it's really about just integrating, integrating all of these, these uh, amazing people who are working together um, and making sure that we all kind of hit the mark at the same time and we're all, we're all going at speed. A um, couple of people I also needed to mention, Simon Duggan, who's our cinematographer, um, who did um, iRobot, and um, also you might know him from Great Gatsby as well. And those are both films where there are so many technical layers to the filmmaking. Um, and you know, the, to me, it was just really important to surround myself with, with people who understood the intricacies of, of, of integrating all of those different layers and making sure that everything that Bill's got to do fits in with everything that Gavin's got to do and all these other departments because it is a uh, it is an epic it's an epic quest to get this film right. <laughs> it's very challenging on the technical side. We, you know, we'll, when we're done, we leave the stage. Quite often, all you're going to see uh, is a 
piece of set with a bunch of blue screen, a couple of human swinging swords and guys in, in pajamas with uh, little lights on them. So that's got to be translated. And in order to do that right, we have to plan very well to make sure that the finished product is going to live up to what we want. Well, and for you, Duncan, I mean, um, this is probably this is the biggest film you've ever made. You know, with uh, Moon being you know kind of small, and then Source Code I know being bigger. Like, yeah. what is it like for you, kind of making this jump to a uh, film of this scale? Um, it's interesting because you always have the same you have you always have the same uh, puzzles to solve. You know, it doesn't matter how big the film gets. It always it always ends up the you know how do I fit this grand ambition into this into this shape? Um, and it it's it. What, what makes it easier or harder is the, perp is the people that you're working with. And again, I, we've been incredibly fortunate and I think you know, uh, smart in the people that we've surrounded ourselves with and also being able to work so closely with you guys because I think you know, working in parallel like this, it, it keeps us honest to what it is we're trying to make and it makes sure that we're always going to you know, go for broke and make sure that we make this the f a film that reflects that world. We can't, we can't you know, detour too far because you know then we're not addressing you know what the, the goal of the film so I think that's been great actually because in a way it can, kind of keeps us anchored and make sure that we're we're making the film that you guys want and I think what you guys want as well. Cool so um yeah I think we've uh, asked most of the questions that we had up here for the panel and we're going to ask some questions out to let you guys ask a few questions of the audience but uh, I kind of need your guys' help a little bit because uh, I've been kind of arguing with these guys backstage and trying to get them to talk a little bit more about what's coming out, what's going to be in the film. Do you guys want to hear any more actual details about what's going to be in the movie? So It's two years away. It's two, yeah, it's two years. I, I know, but you're up on Twitter all the time, so I figure <laughs> you know, you got to be able to like reveal some stuff. And you know, you, you, you did something special for Comic-Con. And I think BlizzCon is more important than Comic-Con. Because <laughs> I just feel like, you know, this, this is where it all came from. Comic-Con's just a bunch of posers compared to the BlizzCon audience. <laughs> so, so I really need your guys' help. I need you guys to really talk Duncan into this, and then when all the uh, legendary PR people check. rush the stage, there I need you to tackle them. There are some producers in the front. I'll ask them if <laughs> give them something. That, yeah. I mean, it's not fair. You have to give them something. I know, exactly, right? <laughs> I could get fired. I need to just make sure I'm not going to get fired. <laughs> get fired. Don't get fired. Don't get fired. <laughs> No one's run on yet. <laughs> no one's run on stage yet. <laughs> okay, well let's. Can we can we just mention? Are they out in the front now? Well, can we just mention just a couple of characters? Just a couple of character names. All right. So you know we we we've been you know obviously we we sort of talked away around it trying to have not <laughs> mention any names but. It is orcs versus humans, obviously, and for us, I think the story that was most important to tell was an origin story of that first contact. So um, for us, for me, and I think you guys agreed, the story to tell was between Lothar and Duratan. That was the, that was the story to get into. And I would imagine most of you know your lore and can kind of know where this is going. But it's, uh, you know, I, I think if I stick with that, those are the two guys. I would say that that um, again, talking about the uh, amazing input that you know, and, and, and working with Blizzard, some of the stuff that Wade did for Duratan, some of the artwork is just mind-blowingly good. And um, it's been hard to find an actor who looks like Duratan. <laughs> Every time I meet you someone, I, I grab their face and I just kind of squish it around a little bit. Yeah, I can kind of see. You. <laughs> yeah, quite often you you uh, get a concept design and then you want to work the actor into that this is the ways artwork is so great yeah we're gonna make it the other way around <laughs> makes you want to think the other way around so uh thank you for uh outing that to everybody i think everyone really appreciates that uh, and hopefully everyone can be on the internet pleading that duncan does not get fired <laughs> it'd be nice if we could keep him on the film um, but maybe, uh, Chris, do you want to talk a little about Duratan and Lothar and kind of 
their back lore for the, maybe the people that don't know much but, about. But now them. I'm worried about getting fired. So it's, <laughs> how do you how do you do that without without saying too much? Um, I would say uh, without uh, without saying too much, I would say for you guys who are dialed in with the lore, you might immediately go like, huh? Wait a minute, did Lothar ever meet Dorothea? Because um, we, we, haven't, we haven't actually covered that in the deep, deep world. But the shape of the vision that Duncan's been playing with is just, uh, yeah, these guys were tailor-made for each other. And they both represent ideals that are um, the highest ideals for each of these races. Um, you know, Lothar for his soldiery and his loyalty and his, uh, you know, this guy that has been burdened with protecting his kingdom, Stormwind, for a very long time, um, potentially throughout a time of peace. Uh, and you have Duratan, you know, classically, um, while we technically in the RTS games back in the day didn't, didn't really see him, he's a character that was introduced a little later, but Duratan as well really represents um, kind of the highest ideals um, of the orcs uh, when they are not crazy. Um, you know, that, that family and, and clan, you know, are the, are the highest ideals. Um, this is a guy that believes in his people, that believes in their future, um, and is ultimately horrified by the idea of um, them getting into some dark, cursed areas. Uh, and ultimately, again, without totally spilling the beans or whatever, um, both of these men are gonna find themselves at this crux point of, of history, really, um, and they will be put to the test. Uh, I mean, both of them are protectors. You know? you know, both of them are protectors right. of their peoples. Um, and I think in, a, in, a, in an impending war a situation that you just know is coming and you can't seem to find a way out of it, I think both of them want to do the right thing for yeah. the people that they're responsible for. Yeah. Well, I think one of the exciting things about exploring the storyline that we are is that the early games really weren't a great mechanism for telling these stories. So it really allows the movie a lot of flexibility to kind right. of do the, like you like to always say, the ultimate version of Warcraft history. Totally. I, I, I always go back to, you know, as we're talking about all these ideas, um, like the, the ultimate Spider-Man thing. I don't know if you guys know about the ultimate line, but it was, an, it was an opportunity in the comics world for kind of retelling classic stories and really keeping all the details and all the vibe, but just kind of tightening the bolts after years and years with the fictional development um, so kind of working with these two characters um, and the, the vector of this story allowed us to kind of really tighten a lot of bolts um, and tell this thing uh, just in a much tighter way um, than we had been able to before, you know, through the, through the game series. So it's been an incredibly rewarding process of re-looking at these ideas. Can you guys hear me? Is this thing cutting in and out? That's all good. I'll just speak louder then. Um, so, you know, as Duncan was saying earlier, I mean, especially through the character of Duratan, I mean, it's really embodying um, the, the nobility and the power and the, just the huge heartedness of orcs that are, that are not corrupt um, was really, really a fun thing to, to see kind of come into play. And um, boy, I'm struggling to not say anything that would be. <laughs> Well, the other thing I think is really interesting when you look at uh, kind of the history of where Warcraft started was those games actually told parallel stories. Oh, yeah. You know, so... The series, yeah, yeah. especially the RTS series, had always been very binary, right? You play the human campaign, you can play the orc campaign. And in those early games, um, they were kind of uh, contiguous, right? So we had to decide, that as we started Warcraft 2, who won Warcraft 1, right? Well, you know, the orcs kind of got the better from that time. And, we had to kind of fudge the continuity as it went because they were really built to be one or the other. So kind of looking at this structure, you know, for this film has been really fun. I mean, obviously some, someone's got to win, someone's got to lose. Um, but in a weird way, it's kind of like, I don't know, everybody loses at least a little bit, right? It's, it's kind of period. Well, I mean, it's, I it's, think it's, it's, a, very it's a hell of a thing, really, that we're getting the chance to make the movie this way because it's for, for any film, any franchise, I think to tell a story where you're really honestly telling it from both sides, especially a war film, um, it's unusual. And I think, I think the fact that we've been kind of given the opportunity to do that really uh, on, a, on a storytelling level is, is breaking, breaking a few barriers in, in 
in, in certainly for these kind of for a big film like this, I don't think you, you're going to see many films that have this kind of structure. Well, and especially when you're uh, telling it from a side, you know, from what I think a lot of non-geeky moviegoers will view as the monster side. Yeah. Right. I think everyone here understands that it's you know that is not who the orcs are. Absolutely. But it's it's going to be really unique to try to. I don't, I don't want to say humanize them, but you know, to really make you know kind of empathize that broad, with yeah, empathize the, with yeah. them with a more broad audience. All right, so um, I'm going to let you guys ask a few questions. Understand that uh, we're probably not going to be able to reveal any more than we've already dragged out of Duncan. But if you guys have uh, questions for anyone on the panel or want to hear more about kind of their history or how to make movies or anything like that, uh, we're going to go ahead and take some questions. All right, uh, Duncan, first of all, over here. Canucks are going down. <laughs> um, I was originally going to ask about what camera you were thinking of shooting this in, but after that revelation, I'm going to ask for a request. Can you blink once for yes, two for no, if the movie is going to tie in with the ending of Warlords of Draenor? <laughs> I, 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 cannot, I cannot tell you any more than what I've said. But what I will say is that I also cannot tell you where we're going to be shooting the movie, which may be fairly obvious. <laughs> well played. <laughs> Give it a shout out to my friends. Um, now, there are war movies, and then there are war movies. Is this going to be more like something like uh, The Golden Compass or the war scene in Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe? Or is this going to be like uh, The Patriot, uh, Braveheart? I mean, what kind of rating are we looking at? Gladiator. Really gritty, muddy, nice. down in the dirt, co covered in grime. Hello, we, um, you've talked about the epicness of the world, characters, what about the music? Wait. That's a very good question. Um, I mean, I know you guys have some wonderful talent in-house, is that the route that it's going to go? Or are we going to see something, you know, Zimmer, I um, I anything think, big uh, like that? It's a very good question, and I think uh, I am, I'm, can't tell you any of the details on the music. But what I can tell you, I think, is as true to the spirit of the world and the characters, um, I think it's as important that the music also uh, has a presence. Because the music is, you know, for the game itself, it envelops you and it's what brings you into the game world. And the music of, of the film has to be as true to the, as the game as the, as the environment is. So uh, my question, I, when I think of humans versus orcs, I think of that traditional cinematic where the infernal comes down and breaks them apart. Now the armor of the human is very exaggerated, very cool, kind of unrealistic, but I'd love to see that translated to real life. Will you guys be able to keep that blizzard style intact in the armor? That has been a huge part of, of the development and the work that we've been doing together, especially with Nick and the team of artists that they have at Blizzard is to find that fine line where it's, it's believable and it works in a real world situation, but it stays true to the, uh, to the scale and the, and the impressiveness, I think, of the game armor. Yeah. The swords that are being built are the biggest swords that a human can wield, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> it won't disappoint. Well, and that's been one of the challenges, though, with the costuming is like a lot of, I think, our costumes, digital characters can wear, but maybe not actual actors. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe you can talk I can't about see that. out of this damn thing. <laughs> you run into little hard. things. There's, there's, uh, there's no scabbards anywhere in uh, World of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah. So when we figure out where a sword's going to go, they don't yeah. just hit the Z key and it pops in their hand. Right. So, uh, <laughs> you have to work out those kind of things. Blizzard has been really amazing in releasing collector art books and even in bookstore cinematic art books. Are there any plans for an art book for this movie? I, I don't know if there are. I, there are certainly not plans at this stage, but what I would say is that we are documenting the process as we go along. Um, and the concept artwork that's being made for the film, obviously you've seen four pieces, but 
that's four of 4,000. I mean, there's so much artwork behind the scenes that's being generated. Um, I would love to see something at some point come out. I know my, uh, my, my beautiful wife is doing a, a behind the scenes photography of all of the construction and of all of the department's work. So I don't know what we'll end up doing, but I, we, we've certainly got the assets for it. So hopefully at some point in the future, you know, I would, I would love for that, for that stuff to get released. Hi, I'm Netherwind uh, from the Alderman server. Audacity is our guild. Um, my question is about the cast. Since you're going to start re uh, filming in January, do you have any cast worked out? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> sure do. <laughs> Lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hi, uh, Warspark, um, Horde, yeah, um, my question for you is, I understand you can't reveal that much, but can you cast Chuck Norris? <laughs> I think, I think the question is, can I not cast Chuck Norris? <laughs> He can do anything. <laughs> Hi, I'm Peter Yurkowski. Um, I grew up on these games. Uh, are you still casting for these movies? I'm an actor and I would love to be in this. I mean, I'm gonna go there. All these people wanna know that too. <laughs> Let me see, I'm trying to think if I can give you some lines, you can try it right now, but. <laughs> Oh, that would be giving away too much. I can't do that. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, my question. <clears throat> my question is about how do you you're going to plan on making it into a trilogy? Into a trilogy. Well, you know, I think for, for us right now, it's absolutely about getting this first film right and making sure that we, you know, tell the story that we want to tell, but, you know, let's be honest, if we're, gonna, if we're gonna do this right and it works out, I think we would all be excited and enthusiastic about continuing the story. It's not like we have a lack of, uh, of stories to tell. Um, and we certainly have an amazing cast of characters. It, it, it seems all, to me that we could do a number of trilogies if we really put our minds to it. Yeah. <laughs> On movie seven, we'll look back at the initial trilogy and uh, say that. I was going to say, on. go see it a couple times. <laughs> First of all, for the alliance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, my question is is the main thing going to be based on Eastern Kingdom or Draenor? <laughs> uh, I, I would say that uh, the uh, the majority of the tale does take place in familiar locales located in what we know as the Eastern Kingdom. <laughs> I just, I just heard someone <laughs> uncock a gun over there in the back. But I think you're okay. We're cool. It's cool. It's cool. Did someone just say the Eastern Kingdoms of Outland? Was that what I heard? That's too clever. Um, so you've made references to a lot of superhero movies and other nerdy movies. And uh, among those, there tends to be a bit of a lack of representation of strong female characters. And Warcraft... Uh, notably succeeds in uh, doing that and you know you can see you have a fairly mixed audience here uh, especially for a convention like this uh, <laughs> but I mean are you planning to cast some sure. uh, of the heroic characters I know Garona's around here and uh, Sylvanas and uh, Jaina and Turinde I mean it just goes on but so far you know everyone 
uh, mentioned has been male and yeah. Well, actually, uh, I think one of the uh, the challenges that that these guys have had, it's been kind of funny. I, I think for uh, you know, especially Chris and I, is that if you look at the lore during that that era, it's pretty much a, a bunch of young white guys, <laughs> you know, and that's been I, I think one of the challenges that when you're when you're young and you're just kind of making up characters, you're just making up what you know. So uh, what the what really the movie guys have been saying is, you know, you guys should have more female characters. I, I think that'd be better for the movie. <laughs> so th that's actually been, you know, Duncan and Bill and the, the movie guys have really been pushing that quite a bit. And obviously, uh, we're kind of outer re reveals today, but it's a huge value for the production and for Duncan himself. And I, I think you guys are going to be pleased once we finally can reveal a lot more details. Without, without, without revealing too much, I, I mean, I can't, I really can't reveal any more names. But I think any of you who know your law will see that there is definitely the opportunities for some very strong uh, female lead roles in in what we're doing. Yep. My. Sorry. Michael Gonzalez, Combat Vet, Hyjal, and For the Horde. <laughs> uh, when's the soonest we can see a preview? <laughs> that would be very soon. Way too soon. Hey, what pro you know, I would say come, come next year. So probably, uh, probably sometime next year. It's one of those things that they haven't even started filming yet. So that, that schedule is just not put together yet. And I think uh, a lot of times it's like about a year out from the release they start doing previews and things like that. I, I, I would say that I think next, next year's BlizzCon panel is going to have a hell of a lot of interesting stuff to show. There you go. So make sure to come to BlizzCon next year. Okay. Hey. I'm Narmana of Ouroboros, and I was wondering why you decided to make a movie instead of possibly a TV series, since you have such a big story that's beautiful that you can put into a TV series. <laughs> I, I, I guess I would, I would answer that these guys have an awful lot on their plate as far as delivering games. <laughs> um, I, I, I would say unofficially, like nothing official at all. I'm just, I'm just riffing here, but like, I want one of those too. <laughs> <laughs> I think the other thing too, if you look at when we kind of went down the road, I think it was in 2006 when we decided to do a movie. Um, that was way before like Game of Thrones existed, right? Like I don't think um, fantasy in TV had been as proven as it is today. And you know, if we're starting over again, you know, maybe we would just do both. Which which means we've been doing this for so long. <laughs> the industry of television has transformed itself. <laughs> well, and you know, if Duncan does uh, the job I know that he's going to do, then uh, maybe uh, more studios be knocking down our doors to do TV shows. It goes back to that point about the number of stories that you that you guys have available to work with. You know, we get this right, and we're going to do our, uh, you know, everything to make sure it does it turns out well. Then you can go anywhere with this. You know, you can you can start going anywhere. All right, this is not my main question, but I'm very interested in the previous gentleman's question about uh, auditioning. My agent would like to know, <laughs> uh, but. I'm wondering when we can pre-order pre -order tickets to the movie on our Bladdle.net account and what Epic Pet will get. <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> wow, I, we haven't even got to the place to start thinking about ideas like that. I, I think I'm going to have to make sure to write that one down and uh, think about that once we get a little bit closer. Yeah, great idea. Yeah, you should be working in our marketing yeah. department. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Um, earlier I heard uh, Warcraft referred to as a franchise, and it is, but I think at this point it's really hallowed ground. Um, it's an institution, and it's as much ours as it is yours. 
And the question I need to hear answered to know that this is in good hands is, are you taking this movie as seriously as they took Lord of the Rings? I can't speak for Peter Jackson. All I can say is, you know, those movies were groundbreaking and took me into a world, you know, in a way that I hadn't seen um, ever, I think. You know, I mean, they just, it just completely enveloped you in this whole uh, culture and world. And, you know, th those were the movies that inspired me and wanted me to be able to do something like this. I mean, I think, you know, I, the fir my first two films were science fiction. And I think there's been an absolute explosion in what kind of science fiction films are getting made right now. And I think, you know, myself and Neil Blomkamp, when we did District 9 and Moon, it's, you know, right in, same, in 2009, science fiction had kind of been not really seen as that um, opportune a place to actually branch out and tell different kinds of stories. And I think right now, fantasy films um, have the Lord of the Rings franchise. And that's kind of, that's what people see and think of when they think of, franchise, of, uh, of fantasy films. And what I really want is to have the opportunity to explode fantasy in the same way that um, you know science fiction is now exploding. And I think Peter Jackson was the was the has has really set the bar as to what fantasy needs to be. Anything we do has to has to match or beat that. Hi. Uh, I'm sure a few people in the audience has some opinions on this, but stereo conversion versus native. Uh, what's your opinion? <laughs> I have uh, one eye much better than the other. So 3D films um, are not not something that immediately works great for me. I, I you know. I actually prefer watching the 2D experience, but I've seen some things. You know. <laughs> but 3D is obviously a, a, a massively important draw um, for some people who really get a lot out of it. I mean, I don't know if you've seen Gravity yet, or if you went and actually saw that in 3D. But you know, the response to that has been that 3D can work. So you know, we'll look into it. I think 3D is something that I would hope that we would release in both, so that people could choose which one they want. I'm a 2D fan, but I know that there are people out there who really do uh, love 3D as well. All right, we're almost out of time, so we probably don't have time for one, maybe two questions. Awesome. All right, uh, so I'm a linguistics major. Uh, oh, it's weird hearing myself. All right, um, so I'm wondering, uh, you guys brought up Avatar, Lord of the Rings, and Game of Thrones, and they all have something in common, that they have fleshed out languages that sort of add more depth to the world. Do you need someone to flesh out Orcish? And if so, when do I start working? <laughs> we, we do have someone who's fleshing out Orcish, I'm afraid. I'm sorry, the job <laughs> is taken. Um, and he is someone who has worked on some of those things that you mentioned. Um, so, uh, no, we're in good hands, but there will be, I think, more to that language um, at the end of the development of this movie than maybe already exists. Um, from from the game side of things, and hopefully that will cross filter back to you guys as well. If you you know if you'd want to use it, I score. <laughs> <Kek. laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> last question. Zug zug indeed. Hello, my name is Keaton Savage from Austin, Texas, and I was just and I was just wondering. Um, what are you trying to get gear this for? Like, what tone and rating? Is it going to be PG-13 to appeal to a much broader audience, or is it going to be R to allow for more stuff to be put into in some way? I missed the end. PG-13. Rating. Oh, about the rating. Um, it's, you know, I think we're going to be probably PG-13. So I think... But if, when, you, when you actually look at this, the films that have come out lately at PG-13 and what you can do in that, there is a constantly shifting and sliding line as to what is possible. You know, the Batman movies were PG-13. And um, if you remember the, the Joker scene with the pencil, that's PG-13. So you, know, you can get away with some shit in PG-13. <laughs> All right. 
I want to uh, thank all you guys for coming out of the panel and, and you know, especially thanking so much that uh, Duncan and Bill is here to uh, share all the information about the movie. And please, all you guys.